coating techniques. Surfaces. The surface of a solid delimits its volume and defines the region where interactions with its environment occur. When considering the structure of a crystalline material, the surface corresponds to a discontinuity in the periodic arrangement of atoms. The number of nearest neighbors is reduced for surface atoms, so that their vibrational states, interatomic separations and associated electronic states are very different from those of atoms within the solid's interior. Surfaces The difference between surface atoms and volume atoms allows us to introduce an ideal surface and a realistic surface. An ideal surface is defined only in terms of the topmost atomic layers spanning a dimension of only several nanometers. A realistic surface describes a region that extends further below the outer surface, down to depths of several microns to several tens of microns. The mechanical, physico-chemical and structural properties of this region differ noticeably from those of the material's volume as well as those of the ideal surface. Surfaces because surface atoms possess a lower number of nearest neighbors, they are involved in a smaller number of bonds and thus experience an asymmetric force field. Indeed, these atoms interact only with other surface atoms and atoms situated within the solid's interior. This results in a certain number of dangling bonds, directed towards the exterior of the solid, which allow the solid to interact with its environment through the establishment of bonds aiming to re-establish the surface atom's equilibrium. The surface state. A surface can be characterized by its mechanical, physico-chemical, topographic, structural properties. The combination of these characteristics defines what we refer to as the surface state. Structural state of a surface. During shaping or machining processes, the contact between a surface and a machining tool considerably modifies the crystalline structure of the superficial surface layers through mechanical and thermal stresses. Structural state of a surface. I the first zone is a contamination zone consisting of a layer of adsorbed gases such as water vapor, hydrocarbons and other atmospheric pollutants. This surface layer extends to a depth of a few nanometers. Two. The second zone is made up of products arising from the interaction with the environment and generally consists of oxides whose composition depends both on the base metal and the environment. 3. The third zone corresponds to a material structure that has been significantly work hardened and where the crystalline matrix is essentially destroyed. This layer, often referred to as the Bobby layer, extends to a depth of about 1 micron. Structural state of a surface. IV. The fourth zone is one which has been mechanically deformed from the accumulation of residual stresses. Its thickness ranges from several microns to several tens of microns. V. The fifth zone corresponds to the unmodified structure of the original material. Describing a surface using the LK model. Imagine slicing of a perfect crystal along a crystal plane. Suppose that the crystal is simple cubic in which the atoms occupy the corners of a cube. These cubes are repeated and filling all the space. A perfect crystal with only one kind of atom occupying all positions equally with no vacancies on any of the sites. Of course, no one is perfect and no such crystal really exists. Suppose now, that the crystal is sliced along the direction, a plane passing through the top surface of a plane of cubes. In this very special case, the atoms on the resulting surface of the same arrangement on the surface as those in the bulk. The TLK model. Misorientation in one direction. Misorientation in two directions. A terrace is a flat area with the same crystal orientation. A ledge is a narrow step separating the terraces. A kink is an irregular twist in the ledge. These surfaces are essentially smooth on an atomic scale. To add or remove an atom from a site and to move it somewhere else requires energy. An atom in the crystalline bulk can be bonded to as many six nearest neighbors. Assume that all bonds are equal in the solid. To move an atom from a terrace site to a kink site requires breaking five bonds and making three bonds at the kink site. The difference in energy in this process is the energy of two bonds. 
If an atom is to be removed or is missing from the surface, that would be a defect called a surface vacancy. Here the word defect means a deviation from the ordered nature of the idealized surface. We see a terrace which is similar to the surface, except that it ends in a ledge and we step down to another terrace. Some atoms are missing in the ledge, forming kinks in the chain of atoms. If an atom is moved into any position, it is called an adatome. If an atom is missing from a terrace, it may be referred to as a terrace vacancy. Adding atom. The TLK model. Real surfaces contain defects such as the ledges, kinks, vacancies and adsorbed atoms. Ledges, kinks and surface vacancies provide locations with stronger bonding than the terraces and are, therefore, favorite sites for atom addition during crystal growth or surface contamination by non-lattice atoms. The TLK model. The energy required to remove an atom from the surface depends on the number of bonds to other surface atoms which must be broken. For a simple cubic lattice in this model, each atom is treated as a cube and bonding occurs at each face, giving a coordination number of six nearest neighbors. Second nearest neighbors in this cubic model are those that share an edge and third nearest neighbors are those that share corners. The TLK model. The kink site is of special importance when evaluating the thermodynamics of a variety of phenomena. This site is also referred to as the half-crystal position and energies are evaluated relative to this position for processes such as adsorption, surface diffusion, and sublimation. The term half-crystal comes from the fact that the kink site has half the number of neighboring atoms as an atom in the crystal bulk, regardless of the type of crystal lattice. For example, the formation energy for an atom is calculated by subtracting the energy of an atom from the energy of the kink atom. This could be understood as the breaking of all of the kink atom's bonds to remove the atom from the surface and then reforming the atom interactions. This is equivalent to a kink atom diffusing away from the rest of the step to become a step atom and then diffusing away from the adjacent step onto the terrace to become an atom. In the case where all interactions are ignored except for those with nearest neighbors, the formation energy for an atom would be 2. Experimental techniques. Stylus profilometry. Scanning tunneling microscopy. Atomic force microscopy. Stylus profilometry. Stylus profilometers are devices equipped with a mechanical stylus consisting of a diamond tip whose radius of curvature is generally between 1 and 2 meters. The surface to be analyzed is moved under the stylus by two stepping motors that allow orthogonal movements with micron level steps. The vertical movements of the stylus follow the topographic defects of the surface and are analyzed using a sensor that generates an electrical signal which is in turn digitized and processed by computer. Scanning Tunneling Microscope SDMS enable the study of topography and the local properties of metallic and semiconductor surfaces with 10-10 level resolution. The principle of operation of the STM is based on measuring the electric current that arises due to the tunneling effect between a fine probe and the sample surface when these are separated by a few angstroms and subject to a potential difference of a few tens of millivolts. The probes used are generally made of tungsten or of platinum iridium and have radii of curvature of a few nanometers. Scanning Tunneling Microscope As the probe scans the surface, an electronic control system measures the tunneling current and moves the probe tip away from or towards the surface to ensure a constant current intensity. By recording the variations of the distance between the probe and the surface as a function of the coordinates of the scan points, an atomic scale 3D representation of the topographic surface is obtained. Atomic Force Microscope one of the main limitations of the STM is that it cannot be used to analyze non-conducting materials. To overcome this, other techniques such as the atomic force microscope have been developed. The sharp tip is brought into the close proximity of the sample surface by the use of the three-dimensional piezo scanner. Upon reaching the close proximity the sample is scanned horizontally and vertically. Due to the forces between the tip and the surface the cantilever deflects, a beam of laser reflects back to the photo detector as a laser spot. 
Atomic Force Microscope When in contact mode, the tip of the atomic force microscope remains in contact with the surface and scans its topography. The drawback of this method for soft materials, however, is that it can scratch or deform the sample surface. In such cases, we use the Eiffman vibration mode where the probe is maintained a few nanometers distance from the sample surface and subject to vibratory movement. Mechanical state of a surface. The mechanical state of a surface can be characterized using four quantities. Hardness. Describes the resistance of materials to plastic deformation. Young's modulus and the elasticity limit. Characterizes a material's elastic properties. Toughness. Accounts for the relative brittleness of a material. Residual stresses. Play an important part in the resistance of the material to wear and cracking. Chemical composition of a surface. The chemical composition of a surface can be characterized using a number of different analysis techniques with the same underlying principle. Specifically, a primary beam of X-rays or electron is directed at the surface under study and induces the emission of secondary or backscattered particles. The characterization of these secondary particles allows the identification of the emitting atom and the composition of the surface analyzed. X Primary particle, electron Secondary particle, photon Characteristics of the technique Elemental analysis of materials to a depth of a few microns Possibility of generating X-ray images showing the distribution of elements Possible applications Analysis of precipitation and segregation in metallurgical materials. Characterization of thick thermal oxide films. Hard anti-wear. Anti-corrosion coatings. XPS. Primary particle, photon. Secondary particle, electron. Characteristics of the technique. Elemental analysis of materials. Information about the nature of chemical bonds, and Analysis of a surface of a few millimeters to a depth of 0.1 to an M. Possible applications. Analysis of oxide films and corrosion layers in order to determine the nature of chemical bonds of the main elements as well as that of impurities. Analysis of passivation layers. Characterization of the state of chemical bonds within polymers and. Analysis of the core level and valence band. Auger. Primary particle, electron. Secondary particle, electron. Characteristics of the technique. Elemental analysis of the top few atom layers of solids. The depth of analysis is 2 to 3 mon layers. Possible applications. Analysis of adsorbed layers. Analysis of thermal or anodic oxide films. Characterization of thin deposits and analysis of segregated layers on surfaces or within grain boundaries. C. Users Umar Desktop as Animation. OGV. Sims. Primary particle, ion. Secondary particle, ion. Characteristics of the technique. Elemental and isotopic analysis of all elements in the periodic table. Determination of concentration profiles of chemical elements to a depth of several microns using ionic sputtering. Detection of trace elements. Can be used to obtain ionic images showing elemental distribution. Possible applications. Analysis of concentration profiles of bulk materials or thin layers. Also used to analyze metallurgical products heterogeneity.